Hello and welcome to another episode of my life experiences. So this is where I share with you some of the experiences that I've gathered in life and the lessons I've drawn from them, hoping that someone may listen, be inspired and learn from these. So today's episode is just an extension of my episode from the past two weeks. What I shared with you about my pursuits in harvesting souls for the Lord. The episode titled On Fire and Fearless. So today, I just want to give you progress. Like, from then, what did I do? How did my life progress? So guys, I had my future planned out. I could see I had a vision of what I want to do in the future. Because I was saying that God should bless me with a man. God should bless me with a husband who fears the Lord. And that was my prayer. Because I was saying that I want to do big things for the Lord. When I get married with this husband, I want to minister more for the Lord. I want to reach out to lost souls. Of course, it was never my prayer to be a pastor's wife. I never really wanted to marry a pastor, but I just wanted a man with good standing before the Lord. And so that we should do best with for the Lord together. So, praise God, he blessed me with a man, a husband who fears the Lord, whom I love dearly. And um, when I got married, I had three main responsibilities. The first one was being a wife, and the second one was, as I shared with you, that I'm a career woman, so I'm an accountant by profession, and I was also responsible for my, my day job. Of being an accountant and the third responsibility was that I was doing my school I was progressing with the higher levels of my education so at that point it's like I had my plate full I couldn't do more of this ministry and I was saying okay I'll have to wait a bit uh, right now I'm focused on being a wife and doing these other things so that I should be able to make my home um, uh, to, to be a good homemaker and also to fulfill my responsibilities at the workplace and at school so I said this ministry thing should wait a bit and do perhaps when I finish school. But one year went by, then something happened. Pregnancy came. And for me, guys, pregnancy is a big thing. It goes with nausea, it goes with heart palpitations, it goes with morning sickness. Most of my pregnancy life. And by the time I'm seven weeks old, in pregnancy, the whole world knows that this person, something is happening with them just because of the symptoms that are, I show. And it's really hard for me to do anything extra from the things that I was doing. So, my plan for ministry still had to be stored. Then I said, perhaps when I have this child, and, and um, I'll be able to do this. But when I had the child, more responsibility had just come because I had to take care of this child full time. I had to make sure that he is blessed fed um, exclusively and everything in raising the child. Then I said, okay, the ministry should wait until the child becomes independent a bit, maybe two years. But when the child was one year old, another pregnancy came. <laughs> So it's like I started the same cycle of being pregnant and uh, all those symptoms of morning sickness and everything. And by the end of three years, I had two kids and I had my ministry had not yet started off. And I was getting frustrated. Right now I've got three kids and it's, my hands are still full. And something happened in my life as this was going on. I just had a conviction in my life that where is it? don't get frustrated about doing these exploits, doing this and that. Don't get frustrated because where you are positioned at right now, this is ministry. God has given you this ministry of being a wife. Do it to the best of your capacity. Do it to the best of your capability. God has given you this ministry of being a mother. Do it to the best of your capability. And at that point, I had to refocus. Because it's like my ministry had evolved from what I had planned out for myself to this of being a family person, of this being a wife, of this being a mother. So I had to be the best mother that I could be. And I thank God for that conviction in my life. Because I started focusing more on my children. How do I make sure that these children that God has given me grow up in the fear of the Lord? 
Because at the end of everything, God is going to ask me that, have you been ac for accountability? He's going to ask me for accountability over how I've raised these children. And yes, um, because of that, I now started giving myself to, to the needs of my children. And I realized that the children have got so many needs. Especially now as they are growing, there are so many things coming from the peer pressure, coming from misinformation from the television, you know, things like now my children are going into adolescence and there is all this talk about boyfriends on the TV, about sex, um, being sex positive. If you are not talking about sex, then you're not sex positive, things like that. And, you know, it confuses the kids and... This is something that challenges me that I have to be present more to, to the children, physically, teaching them, okay, the world is telling you about sex positive, but no, this is not true. They're not telling you about the dark side of this, because this premarital sex, it comes with the diseases. This premarital sex, it comes with the broken hearts. This premarital sex, it comes with... Um, Anointed pregnancies, and then you'll be tempted to uh, you be to abort your baby. It's like now you are tempted to start killing babies. So all oh, this dark side, the TVs they do not tell. You know these liberal ideas of nowadays. They they are not telling the children the truth. So I've got this challenge in my life that I have to set the record straight with my children that. It's not about sex positive, that sex positivity is just a code for being a loose woman, being a whore, basically, or being a whoremonger, a loose man. So this is just a code, a code for these kids. Take your heart. So I have to tell uh, my kids to be patient and not to rush into these ideas because it's like the devil is just trying to sugarcoat these things as if they are good things but in essence there is trash inside there is poop inside and now as a mother I have to make sure that I debunk these things to my children and apart from looking at their physical needs I'm also looking at their spiritual questions that okay, you know guys, these things, this is called a sin. It's called a sin in, in, in the eyes of God. And when I say that the children have got so many questions that okay, mom, what are you saying? God, God, what is the proof that God even exists? What is the proof? You know, people have got so many religions. Why is Jesus um, the only way? Why, why are you saying that? What about other people who have never heard of him? Why do you even, how do you even know that there is a God? So I have to dedicate really my life in, in reading scripture so that I should be grounded and I, so that I am able to respond to these questions. And I say to them, guys, there is such a thing as God. Whatever the creation is, it did not come um, in place by itself. Somebody created it. And the person who is responsible for this creation has set standard for us, standards for us. Has, there, there are moral laws that govern us and we need to abide by these moral laws because they are good for us in the, in the future, in the longer term. Otherwise, the things that the devil sugarcoats now are just looks good just for the immediate term, but in future, they come with so many repercussions. So, and ramifications. So I'm trying to set the record straight with the guys that, okay, all these questions that you are having, there is such a thing as moral law and you need to follow these things. And the truth is absolute. If God says this is wrong, it's wrong. If God says this is right, it's right. There's nothing like, okay, everyone has got their own truth. As long as you are happy and as long as you are satisfied in your life, everything is good. It's your truth, live your truth. There's nothing as like that. It's, it's all a lies. So I have to straight, set the record straight. That guys, the truth is absolute. When you say 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, that's it. 2 plus 2 equals 4. It cannot be 3. It cannot be 5. 2 plus 2 cannot be anything else but 4. So truth is absolute. No negotiations. So I have to set the record straight for my children.
and I also have to be present for them to take care of their mental health because you know the children when you are absent in their life it affects their mental health they become remorseful they become confused with life confused with their identity they don't know who am i they don't know why is my parent absent they don't know a lot of things they've got questions they think that you hate them so i have to be there i have to show them love i have to do all these things just to make sure that i'm present in the um in my my, my children's life and i'm there to observe each and every um, milestone that they achieve in their life so I'm trying to do all these things as a mother so I'm just trying to, to share with you guys this ministry that I've taken up on myself that I've, I've embraced the ministry of motherhood and I've embraced the ministry of being a wife I've embraced that I have to be there for my children in their physical needs I have to be there for my children in their spiritual needs because the word of God in Proverbs 22 verse 6, it says that teach a child when they are still young and when they grow up, they will never depart from that. So I have to train these children when they are still young. So this is the full-time ministry that I found myself in, guys. And right now, um, my heart is at peace because I'm also uh, trying to make sure that their mental health is good. They don't resort to depression or harming themselves. They are satisfied. You know, I shared with you in my past episode how I had some emptiness. I was feeling, I had feelings of an emptiness in my life just because of absence of parents. So parental absence really creates a void in the lives of their children. That's what I've learned from my experience. And I'm trying to do all these things to be present um, in the life of my children. So this is a priority for me right now. Um, whenever I, fi I find uh, an opportune time and I've done all these responsibilities, I make sure that I, I do other ministries for the Lord. I make sure that I go maybe for missions and things like those. But at this point, I, I also have to make sure that I'm accountable to the Lord because of this primary ministry. Because this is the basic unit that the Lord has given me. And the future of this country, the future of this world is dependent on on uh, the well-being of, of these children. So guys, I just wanted to share this with you so that maybe as youths you can appreciate um, what it entails to be a wife, what it entails to be um, uh, a mother. Because sometimes you may have all these expectations and uh, assumptions, making so many assumptions that I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do exploits for the Lord when I get married. But I just want to encourage everyone, maybe a youth out there that Take this opportunity to do the best you can for the Lord. Seize the moment. Seize the moment. Seize it right now and do uh, the exploits that you have to do for the Lord. Don't bend it until you're married. Don't bend it until, uh, don't bend it until you become independent or you've got your own home. But where you are right now, take the opportunity. When, whenever the opportunity you have, do the exploits that you can do for the Lord. Do the best that you can do. Because you cannot tell what the future will bring. The future can evolve into something else that you never thought about previously. So they just take full advantage of this life and the opportunity that you have at this point to do exploits for the Lord. So guys, since the moment, take advantage of these opportunities. This is what I wanted to share uh, with somebody uh, this evening. Thanks, guys. I hope this has encouraged someone. Once again, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I've got so many good things in store for you guys. And when you subscribe, also share a link, this link with other people. And also press the thumbs up, the like button. Thanks, guys. Be blessed.